The next step in the reassembly of our 65 Chevelle project was to reinstall all the front sheet metal and doors. We had previously marked the location of the door hinges using some pins so that when we reassembled the doors onto the car, they would align perfectly right back in the place where they were when we did all the bodywork. This would guarantee that all the lines would match and the doors would fit properly. We used this same technique when reinstalling the rear deck lid and it fit perfectly without having to spend a lot of time aligning. We took some extra time to attach the inner fender to the freshly painted fender, but we did it off the car. And the reason for this is that the fender needs to be stretched and pulled over the inner fender to fit properly. And we didn't want to risk scratching up the inner fender or the inside of the actual fender during the installation process. On this particular car, you can take the inner fender and fender assembly and kind of wedge it underneath the front area and drop in one bolt and then carefully swing the front of the fender around and line it up with the core support and then drop the bolts in the front. And if you do this carefully and use a lot of masking tape on the body, you can assemble the fenders and inners together without causing any damage. This technique might not work on all cars, but it worked out for us very well on the 65 Chevelle project. And remember that we were putting this car back together before the outside was final painted and final cleared so that we could make this into a running driving car to facilitate a little bit easier transport into the paint booth. We could actually drive this thing in, shoot the final color and clear, and then drive the car out again. When we did the bodywork on this car, we already determined the correct number of shims for each bolt location. So we just checked our notes and put the exact number of shims in the right spots so that the panels would fit properly. Eighth inch holes drilled in the fender and the hood hinge make it easy to realign everything using some eighth inch drill bits as guide pins. And this way again, the hood would fit properly with minimal adjustment. Only after all the sheet metal is in place are any of the bolts finally tightened. And it's important to do this with the car's weight supported on jack stands or its actual wheels and tires. And doing this will make sure that your body panels are going to fit nice and crisp the way they were when you mocked them up in bodywork. The next major piece of sheet metal to go on our Chevelle was the hood, which usually takes a couple of people to make sure that the hood doesn't scratch the car or the hinges or the bottom side of the hood. And the trick is to put the lower hood hinge bolts in first because they'll support the hood like a lever so it won't come down. And then you can add the upper hood hinge bolts. And again, if your alignment was done properly the first time and the hinges are pinned or marked, now you've got a much better chance of success when it comes to closing it for the first time. A brand new reproduction grill from OPGI made the front end sparkle and finally our Chevelle was starting to look like a complete car again. Nothing takes away from a fresh restoration like crappy scratched up glass. So we got all new glass from OPGI, which was tinted green, not only for the sunshade at the top, but also because of the car having air conditioning. Our installer noted that the OPGI glass seemed thicker than most of the repro stuff he's used, which made us feel good because when it was installed in the hole, it had the right depth and looked proper. The installer added a black rim around also to make it look nice and clean and hide the glue. Next time we're going to be topping off all the fluids, finishing off some loose ends, getting the Chevelle running, and then prepped and wet sanded for a final trip to the paint booth for color and clear.